Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim at Bluebird Legacy channel. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, today, as I promised, we are going to talk about rust dyeing. Now, the, I'm going to show you some things and show you how to rust dye, and then we will, um, I think next next time, I'm going to make some things out of what I've rust dyed. This piece is one that I did um, several years ago. It's an older um, tablecloth, and it's very soft. It's a woven, um, just a piece of one, rather. But I like this shape right here. It looks like a heart. Um, I thought that was interesting. Everything is random when you do rust dyeing. And, I mean, you can try to get different marks, but it depends on if the fabric is textured or lace or whatever you're using as to what you're going to get. And then again, it depends on what type rusted objects you use. Of course, this is a collaboration with Old, New, and Blue. And we um, thought we would go to our uh, thrift shops that we like. And if you recall, if you watched my video Last time, it's the last one there, I showed what I picked up at one of my thrift shops, and it was these rusty bits, these nails, and you'll see marks on some of the things that I used. These old, very old, um, probably from the early 1900s or the 1800s, they're photo, uh, this, they were to keep photos in place. And um, I had a whole bag of those. And then as I unwrap our bundles, um, you'll see. Now, what you need for this project is, obviously, you need some items that are rusted. The bigger they are, the easier it'll be for you. I couldn't find any nails or, you know, railroad spikes or anything like that. But you also need some lace. You'll want some lace um, if you like that sort of thing. I used canvas. Um, this is a heavier piece of canvas right here. And then um, this that I laid everything out on, it's, it's actually a piece of canvas that, um, that I tore and used, as you see when I unwrap the bundles that we wrapped up around the rusty bits. Um, this is a piece of like just cotton um, eyelet, real simple. This is a super old dish towel um, that just went to bits, and you'll see it picked it up so heavy. I'm trying to get you to see the texture in the piece. This is so soft. Um, I used a piece of that. I used a piece of this Battenberg lace, some pieces of that. Um, this is a piece of um, linen, sort of a braided piece from some lace. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I used any of that. That was just actually on my pile. But this is a piece. This is an old piece that I, a Battenberg lace. Um, it was like a placemat and it was white originally and I used um, inks and paint. So you can dye with lots of different things that aren't just say Ritz dye. You can dye with all sorts of things. Here's a piece of the canvas. So the, I'm showing you the, some fabrics. The more difference to your fabrics, the more difference of the results you're going to get. This is a nylon. Now, typically, I find that um, it's nylon, sort of a ruffle trim. I find they don't dye as well, but if you leave them long enough and you re-wet them, they will. So you try. It's, it's all about experimentation. Um, that's what we've dyed, and I'm going to show you, and then another smaller piece. So I have all kinds of bits in here. Um, the other thing is, you you know, these pieces looked like this. Just, just pieces of um, trim or lace. This is a piece of, like, I don't know if it was a curtain my aunt had or a tablecloth or something, and she um, didn't want it anymore, and so I took it to to experiment with dyes and stuff. I've experimented with some inks there, but I used a piece of this definitely in our rust dyeing today. 
The other thing you need is you'll need a tray. If you can see, this is a, um, a glass, just a 13 by nine tray. I find that to be easy to spray things down. If you have a metal tray, that's okay. Whatever it is that you wanna hold it in. Of course, your, your rusted items, and then the thing that rusts it is the water and white vinegar. You're gonna use 50-50 and just put it in any spray bottle that you wanna use. This is just one that I recycled. I'm, I like to do that. So, or you can go out and buy one. Um, and those are really all the things that you need to do this project. So, the first piece that I took off and I was trying to get it dry, um, it's, yeah, it's the one, and I'm gonna try my best so that you can see. This is where the nails were, the lighter marks, if the, if the camera will focus. Yeah, there's darker marks in that. And then this is where I burned it with my heating tool accidentally. But this is a piece of the really super um, thin dish cloth. And this will be wonderful to sew into another piece. Just hand stitch down and to use. And you see where it's folded, it's lighter. Those are the variations in the fabric when it dies on its own that I really enjoy. So that's that piece. A couple of these I had to unwind. So then we have this and I'm not really fond of this. I may dye it darker. Um, it's just too light and dark for really something I would do, but you know, you may love it and, and use it. It got a lot of the dark, dark browns in there. So, so did this one. And this really got, now this can be washed and then, you know, the vinegar and the water as they dry naturally, it makes them sort of stiff, but you can wash the fabric and the rust is gonna stay in the fabric. This is a piece, excuse me, I bumped that. This is a piece of the, uh, the canvas, this, this canvas that I have laid down on my table there. And you see it's lighter on the other side and it has variations where it touched different uh, parts of the rust, which I love this piece. This is really a good piece to use in stitching or in books. Here's a piece of the Battenberg lace. It really picked it up. It's a nice rusty brown, which personally, and I, I just grabbed these feathers real quick that I had, um, that I had dyed with the ink pad and um, I like these two colors together. The sort of a turquoise and this rust, I, I like them together myself. But that's piece Battenberg bit lace and then this one has some lighter variation on it. You can turn it this way and it's all dark. And your hands feel rusty too as you do this. It's actual sort of rust. Now here are the, what I'm gonna show you. This is how you make the rust bits. These are the, um, from my thrift shop find. These are the drawer pulls that I uh, found and they were some of the best ones. Um, I like this one. This one is really pretty amazing. It has some like patina from the, from the um, brass that's on here. So I'm sort of excited to open that one up. Okay, so the first one, and that's the fun, it's sort of like, you know, opening up gifts and seeing what you got. Now this is totally grungy. Not all of them will be so grungy, but this one is some major grunge. And that's the bit that I used. It's a drawer pull there. And then, you see it's darker in some areas and it's just a real thin, I like the variations in it. This will be great in a grungy sort of book. There's a mark. Okay. Uh, let's go for this one. Okay, look at the colors on that. This one really is the colors that I like. Some darks 
and some lights. some threads. I mean, you can even use that in some of your artwork, whether it's stitching or books. Here's a piece of the canvas that I tore off a piece of my bigger canvas. There's a little bit of the patina coming off. This is a great, I mean, this you could really make something look worn and old. And here's some of the rust bits on it. and then the brown. It's beautiful. Okay, and then I had some lace around this one. I put several different pieces on this. It had a handle. This one I don't mind. And then there's more here. So every time you do this, you're gonna get different results. I think um, each time I've done it, as you saw here with this, this was a rusted sort of a screw or the, and a uh, railroad spike. And it did this. Of course, the fabric makes a difference too. This. And that's this piece of lace. That's what it did to that. Right up close. It doesn't, because this is not cotton. This is an older sort of, I don't know, nylon, which I don't particularly care for, but I wanted to see what the variations were, which that's very usable. And then I wrapped some gauze around the handle. When you wrap, I'll show you, if you twist it, you'll get a more of a varied coloration on your piece. I like doing this because it's gonna come out random. And I like random things. Okay, so there is that piece the piece I used. Ooh, I love this one. This will make a wonderful grungy sort of textile. See, and this is what you get when you twist. You get just almost like a striated tie-dye look, which I love. And this is another real thin, woven, old fabric. I don't think this is the dish towel. <coughs> and, you know, it goes without saying, if you're a person that's allergic or you don't can't be around chemicals or whatever, I mean, it's just vinegar and water, but still, you should be careful if you have breathing problems or whatever, because there's like little, little sort of, like my hands, as you can see, they're kind of, orangey and of course I go and wash them right away but just be careful as with anything okay so here's a piece of the canvas here we have that and then the dark side I mean that would make a wonderful looking uh, old vintagey strap on a bag or something that's awesome it looks used and then I put also Oh, boy, this one really stuck. You know, these are not, in my opinion, the best. Oh, wow. It made an imprint. These are not the best pieces of rust. You can find much better screws and big, you know, wire and things. I've seen people do lots bigger. But this is what I had, so I wanted to work with it. So... Um, I was really wondering if these were going to rust it the way that my original try had been. But look at that. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's because the fabric was very thin. 
and the it, I had it soaking wet. I'll show you as we rewrap these with the fabric. And it had a chance to dry. And then it made the imprint. I hope you can see that. Oh, that's... Oh, that's really cool. Okay, and the last bundle, as I call them, a little package, this one is the very light fabric, and it did some really different things. Oh, look at that color. Oh, my. I love that. That is my color right there. Oops, sorry about the camera. I think I need to get a gooseneck. Oh, look at that. Amazing. <coughs> Excuse me. So there is the outside. It got an imprint also. Oh, I love it. And it got some of the green. You can buy paint and mediums like that to put on your items or you can find vinegar and water and rust and dye it on there See, that right there looks like it's powdery but it's not it's not coming off love it these are great results Okay, and the handle. Okay, so that's really all it did. I just tied it around the edge and wet it. So, and I didn't expect that fabric to really dye because it's not a natural fabric. I used to dye uh, wool for my sheep. I had a flock of sheep. I grew a couple two sheep and then got a ram and grew it my flock up past 10 and um i used to dye their fleece boy this is a cool one and so i've practiced with a lot of different things and i find that natural fibers are really the easiest and um, most conducive to some of the mixed media processes so that one is really cool i twisted it that's where it really touched it got darker so yeah, lots of good marks. This would be a good one for stitching. What I'll do with these is I'll um, press them with a sheet in between to not get any of the rust on my iron and then um, decide which ones I wanna stitch. Boy, this is a real, real awesome one. So how you do this, I wanted to show you the ones I made because they have to sit overnight and dry. So what you would do is you'd find your um, fabrics that you'd like to use. And I'm going to grab a couple over here. Um, here we go. Here's some canvas in this. We'll do an example. Um, so you'll take whatever it is you're rusting. And obviously, if you have like a, a spike, I'm just going to use this as an example. If you had a spike from... Um, Railroad ties is generally what you can find. If you can find a junk shop that has a bunch of rusty stuff, or maybe your grandpa has a bunch in his, you know, barn or his, you know, garage, or maybe your husband does, who knows? Um, so maybe you do. But those wood pieces that are round and shaped like this are much more conducive to wrapping, like so, than a flat piece like this, see? So... <clears throat> That's why I'm using that as an example. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your fabric, and I like working with a smaller piece than this. So what I'm going to do is just cut it, take a snip, and tear it, because I like those raw edges that it gives. And you saw a couple pieces that I dyed. This is what that looked like before I dyed it. Um, so then you will take... And just use your vinegar and water. Don't put it in your coffee. Let me get a sip of coffee here. And you'll spray down 
your a canvas. Canvas, you know, it doesn't soak in super fast, but I just kind of rub it like that. And then put that wet side right next to the place where you want to get, you know, the, the rust. So I like to hold it tightly. Then I'll put some more on there and just go to wrapping. As the surface that's touching it is what's going to get the dye on there. And then as it sits, if you really soak it down more, it is going to flow through. Like this fabric is cottony canvas, so it will flow through to the next fabric. See, it's already getting a little bit on there because it's a rusty rusty piece. And if you're afraid of getting dirty, then this probably isn't the fun thing for you to do. But you could always wear gloves, you know, if you wanted some rusty bits. Let's try this one. Let's try this piece. And I'll just cut it in half. You know, use your pieces that you really, maybe in your stash or maybe ones that you go to a thrift shop and you don't really care about because you just don't know what they're going to look like when you're finished. It's all a random process and so you need to be open to letting them basically be <laughs> destroyed. But there's like a freedom in that, you know, when you when you you want it to, you're trying for one, you know, rusty look and then you wrap it up and you just let go of the results and that's what i find in art is really the ultimate when you let go of the results let's get that string off normally i would keep it but it's kind of impeding us wrapping this up when you are not afraid of the results of your art and you just let it be there's just a whole lot of freedom Obviously, we all want to create something that's enjoyable to look at, you know, at least that we enjoy looking at, um, you know, and most of us want other people to enjoy it. But I find that the, the biggest and best sort of enjoyment comes when I just enjoy the process and, and, and make things and, and let it flow. So see, now I'm wrapping it this way because there's some open spaces there. And it was a long piece. It was a lengthy piece, not, not just a square piece. So this one, you know, is going to lay in here. Um, now I did what I did to these so that I could make a video this evening was I put them, I turned my oven on at like 300 and they were almost dry when I woke up. I made them last night. They were almost dry. Then this afternoon, I put them in the oven, in the pan, for just a few minutes watching them, you know, letting them get really warmed up. Because it's winter here where I live. And, um, you know, just the heater's on. So let's, let's wrap this. I wanted you to see, and that's really all you do. You know, this is all it takes for that. Now what I did with the uh, nails is I had a flat piece of um, a flat piece of cotton and I took the nails and I sort of laid them all over the the piece. I'll show you. Like I could take since they're so small and they were they were in with this. This made a good mark. I sort of pressed them into it and then sprayed it. And then let me find this piece. Oops, I'll bump that. You can lay this piece on there. And then I took one of my stainless steel pots and I just sat it on top overnight. That way it, it pressed, you know, it pressed it into that. 
I'm going to try to lay these on there too. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you will try to rust dye yourself. Hey, I hope, would you please give me a thumbs up and um, come back for more uh, creativity and making things and um, be sure to go over to Old, New and Blue. This is a collaboration with her. She's going to have a video up and um, if you will, check out her video. She's going to make something creative and... Uh, so you'll have two. I'm looking for some more. Uh, I was wondering, this one, that's really awesome. See, those are the rings of the, right there is the rings of uh, water as it dried. Right in here. This is the green that came off from it, Tina. And then this is rings of where the wetness was. And it actually picked up the whole outline, which is pretty amazing. So, let's see. I've got the spring that I didn't use. I wanted to try to use that. Let's use another piece of canvas. Let's see what happens. And the next time uh, on my video, I am going to be... Uh, I'm going to really tighten that so maybe see the the spring pieces will get into the canvas. So the next time on the video, what I, my plan is, whether it, well, I might do a different video also, but I will be using these and I'll list it as um, rusted uh, fabrics and, and what they're turned into. I'm going to be making a few things and showing you. And uh, we'll go with that. And I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is set one of my uh, canvas, or excuse me, I'm going to set one of my stainless steel pots on top of this for some weight. And of course, everything is not flat. It's it's not gonna get everything, but it'll get a lot of it. And these strings. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope y'all will just um, try this yourself, see what happens, and, um, you know, tag me on Instagram. I'm Bluebird Legacy uh, on Instagram. Over there is where you can see some of my sheep if you go back and look at those videos, and uh, tag me and let me see what you make with your rusted fabrics. It's always fun to collaborate and share and see what the other artist is making such a good community <coughs> you'll be smelling that's the vinegar is making me cough <coughs> you will smell like vinegar when you're done i'm gonna press this into there mm. look at that color gorgeous thanks so much and have a good wednesday evening Happy rust dying. Till next time. Bye-bye.